thank the science activity center for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, uh, women in mathematics i mean my my uh, presentation will mainly be uh, focused around how even when women were not formally seen in mathematics they were always there in mathematics uh, behind the scene so that is the content okay so i will begin with the uh, motivation and the plan of my talk so the plan of the talk is as follows so i'll first start with the motivation for the uh, for the research problem or or a problem in mathematics uh, that i am going to describe uh, in this uh, session uh, and that particular problem is uh, called as shape optimization problems and i will also talk uh, at some little more length about a special kind of shape optimization problem known as the isoperimetric problem and i will talk about its brief history and mainly the story of queen dido that's the main focus of my presentation today and uh, so let's let's begin so uh, uh, so what we see mathematicians and, and even a layman i mean every human being what they see around them in nature they they uh, nature is enough to uh, make us uh, think and start questions about why th why are things the way they are so for example questions of the following type it's quite natural to have those questions when we look around that why are small water droplets and bubbles that float in air approximately spherical right why does a herd of reindeer form a circular patch if they are attacked by wolves and uh, why does a cat fold her body to form an almost uh, round shape when the cat is left outside on a cold night can we hear the shape of a drum uh, meaning that if there is a drum playing in the next room i mean i don't get to see the drum but i only hear the sound of the drum so if i have complete information about the sound of the drum will i be able to guess what shape the drum has and of all geometric figures having a certain property which one has the greatest area or volume and a similar question is of all figures having a certain property which one has the least perimeter or surface area i mean depending upon which dimension your uh, object is placed in so uh, mathematicians have been trying to answer these questions via what are called as shape optimization problems so what is shape optimization problem as the name suggest uh, a typical problem is to find a shape which is optimal in the in the sense that it minimizes certain cost functional while satisfying given constraints so i generally uh, explain this uh, your via some uh, optimization problem that we all deal with in a day to in our day to day life for example if i want to buy a tv from the market and uh, whenever you try to buy something we tend to bargain i mean we uh, uh, if not bargain so uh, then at least we try to find the cheapest one which uh, cheapest one that will satisfy or which that will have all the features that we are looking for in that object so what i will do suppose i am buying it from particular uh, uh, website on the internet uh, then i i am looking for a television so i what i will do i will do go, uh, search of a television for say on amazon or flipkart or snapdeal or whatever your favorite uh, website and then once i uh, search for all the tvs i will just uh, sort them in the ascending order of the price okay and then i will look for the cheapest one the cheapest one need not be unique there may be many tvs having the same lowest price now when i look at the tv then i realize oh this is not the tv that i was looking for this is like a very outdated and i this is not the one i am interested in then i do some advanced search then i will think about the features that i am looking for uh, for example if i if i need a high definition tv smart tv if i want alexa to come with it and some uh, some condition on the diameter of the screen etc so i will put all these features and i will do uh, all these filters and i will again uh, sort them in the ascending order of the price and now whatever is the cheapest that i get uh, that again it did not be unique is the tv that i will go and i will buy because it has all the properties all the features that i am looking for and it is uh, it is the best price that uh, i can buy it for so that is the optimization problem in a day to day life and similarly we do it in mathematics so you have some cost in your mind it the cost could be in terms of some geometric properties like perimeter and and also you you try to uh, minimize this uh, perimeter for example among all the sets which satisfy a given constraint so the constraint could be like the filter that we had or the features that we had the constraints could be that all the domains having a particular area like that 
so mathematically speaking what i want to do is i want to find a domain omega that minimizes a cost functional i will denote this cost functional as j of omega okay it's a function of the set possibly subject to a constraint of the form g omega equal to 0 so whatever the constraint i have i will just give it a mathematical form and i will just put it uh, g omega equal to 0 that is omega satisfies this mathematical condition so in other words i am minimizing this j omega over a family f of admissible domain so whatever tvs that were satisfying the constraints i had uh, satisfying uh, the features that i expected them to have will be called admissible tvs so similarly the domains which satisfy the constraints i will call them admissible domains and i will collect them in a single bag and call that bag as the uh, the family f okay so and then among all the domains in this bag that i have collected i will find the one for which j omega is the lowest like that uh, so that is to find a star domain in this family from this bag such that uh, the cost for this particular domain is the lowest among all the all the cost uh, in the family okay so now it's time to uh, talk about a particular example of a shape optimize of shape optimization problems namely the isoperimetric problem i mean i shouldn't say the isoperimetric problem there is one classical isoperimetric problem but there are uh, so many isoperimetric problems in literature available and uh, i i mean as i explained it to you you will realize that isoperimetric problem can be thought of i mean the the situation that you can imagine you, that can give rise to uh, an isoperimetric problem like the day to day uh, uh, cost optimization problem price optimization problem the moment you change the family the moment you change your cost functional you get a new uh, optimization problem so similarly here also depending upon whatever it uh, uh, i mean whatever you can imagine and you can formulate it mathematically that gives rise to a new isoperimetric problem but be uh, before you understand this maybe let me explain to you what i mean by an isoperimetric problem and why uh, is an isoperimetric problem uh, an example of a shape optimization problem okay so uh, what is an isoperimetric problem so isoperimetric problem is to enclose a given area capital a which is given to you it's a fixed positive number with the shortest possible curve okay so uh, you are given a thread or a chain of gold and i don't want you to spend uh, uh, i want you to use as little of length of the chain uh, so that the chain when you when you place it on a piece of paper it the area enclosed by this chain uh, uh, curve is 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 uh, at least this capital a that i have given you so you can think of this capital a as say 100 square uh, uh, millimeter okay so i i am giving you a gold uh, thread and i am telling you that using this gold gold thread you you enclose make a curve it could be a square it could be a rectangle it could be uh, a circle it could be an ellipse it could be some amoeba like shape so make a loop using this gold thread such that the area enclosed by this loop is at least 100 mm square if i i pose this question to you what do you think will be the shape which shape will enclose a uh, the the desired area such that the length of the thread is minimum and uh, Uh, so why is this an example of a shape optimization problem because the cost functional over here that we are considering is the perimeter of omega that we want to minimize because that that is it's expensive right it's a gold thread i mean i just to give uh, just to like make you understand why uh, minimizing the perimeter could be of interest and the constraint that we have is g omega is equal to 0 that is the area of the uh, domain enclosed should be exactly equal to the fixed number in in our case it was capital a and for in the example that i considered it was 100 mm square so uh, so what the classical isoperimetric theorem says it says that in the euclidean plane that is if you have a plane paper and you put the gold thread on the plane paper then the curve which will um, uh, uh, mac, uh, which will minimize the perimeter such that it encloses the area capital a which is fixed a priori uh will be a circular shape no and it is a unique solution no other shape no other shape will have exactly uh, will minimize the perimeter so if it is it is some curve which is not a circle then the perimeter will be larger okay so it will not be a perimeter minimizer and this property of the circle can be expressed in the form of an inequality 
uh, which is known as the isoperimetric inequality and it is important to see this inequality so that you understand the importance of the pi we are celebrating pi day so let's celebrate pi in this inequality as well okay so as i was telling you that uh, suppose i am given a thread of given length that is the perimeter is constant then such pro and i want to make a shape make a loop using this thread and make a shape on this graph paper any shape that i like okay so the self intersection is not allowed like it cannot cross each other figure 8 is not allowed it uh, multiple crossing is also not allowed so it should be like uh, uh, a shape like this without any self intersection and this is the perimeter of the domain and the if you count the number of squares inside this uh, domain then that is the area enclosed by the domain this is how we compute the area so now since i am fixing the perimeter whatever shape that i make with this thread only and if i want to uh, enclose maximum area i want to find a shape such that the area is maximum then uh, which shape will that be so this is called an isoperimetric problem because the perimeter is fixed and i want to maximize the area enclosed by the domain similarly when i have uh, suppose the area is fixed i am now explaining you the iso area problem where the area is fixed and i have a thread of an arbitrary large length as i want so there is no limitation on the length of the thread i can take it as short as large i mean uh, assume that this is this has infinite length uh, 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 thread over here a rope over here so now i want to enclose say for example capital a which is fixed which you can think of it as 100 mm squares and i want to find the shortest possible length this is a gold thread assume that this is a gold thread i cannot spend as much as i wish i want to minimize on the cost so i want to enclose 100 square meter so for example suppose this this is 100 square meter suppose then i want to enclose the same area we using the shortest possible curve and this problem will be referred to as it as iso area problem and as i explained using that inequality that solving an iso area problem is equivalent to solving an iso perimetric problem because of the inequality and because we, when you fix one you get an upper bound for the other one which is attained when it is a circle if and only if it is a circle and when you fix the other parameter there is a lower bound for the other uh, parameter and uh, this lower bound is attained when the inequality becomes an equality and which is precisely the situation when it is a circle and i would want you to do this experiment on your graph paper using your uh, thread that you might have at home and try to uh, understand yourself why circle is the solution for both these problems okay please try it yourself but let me also tell you why the problem is called iso perimetric problem so iso means the same and perimetric means the perimeter so it's like among you consider all the domains having the same perimeter and you try to study something but i just now told you that this inequality uh, proves the equivalence of iso perimetric problem and iso area problem for example if you fix the perimeter l square okay if you fix the perimeter l square Uh, l uh, when you fi fix l then of course l square is also fixed when you fix l then l square by 4 pi is fixed okay and uh, a will be less than or equal to l square by 4 pi so when perimeter is fixed in the iso perimetric problem a will be uh, maximum when a is exactly equal to l square by 4 pi okay and that is when a, when the c is a circle right so this says that when the perimeter is constant then area is bounded above because with a thread of fixed length you cannot uh, enclose an arbitrarily um, uh, larger area domain the restriction on the perimeter will also give some upper bound on how much area you can enclose with that thread okay so it gives an upper bound on the on the on the area and the upper bound is attained if and only if it's a circle so the area maximizer perimeter is constant area maximizing you will see that in many of the important inequalities in mathematics this pi plays an important role because in many of the important inequalities you the constant that uh, that appears is is often the volume or uh, volume of the n ball or the in two dimensional let me call it the area of a unit ball and the area of the unit ball is in terms of pi this we, this we all know and even your very uh, famous uh, eulers equation which uh, Uh, uh which is something which uh, a great mathematician say, said is it is 
it is some it is so beautiful and uh, all the important inequalities and equalities and identities uh, in mathematics involves uh, many of them I, I i shouldn't say all of them many of them do involve this pi and this is one example okay so i, I will go through the proof the attempts that were made to prove the classical isoperimetric problem so the first proof was believed to be due to Zenodorus. This is uh, his lifetime was from 200 BC to 140 BC, and he wrote. A, of course, at that point of time, mathematics was not as evolved as it is in today's date. So his proof of the isoperimetric problem was via a sequence of uh, figures, mathematical figures, which indicated that he is proving this result for uh, polygons. Okay, and it was uh, it was uh, found in the. Uh, it was known through the collection uh, by Papus of Alexandria and uh, so he proved that among all polygons enclosing a given area, the regular ones have the least possible length. That is among all rectangles having a fixed area, the square will have the minimum length. This again I think uh, all the up to 12 standard students can prove this. So try to prove this if you cannot prove the classical isoperimetric theorem in the greatest generality. Try to prove that among you know what is the formula for the area of a rectangle and you know what is the formula for the area of a square then prove that among all the uh, rectangles having a uh, enclosing a given area the square has the least possible length okay and uh, you will see in one of the presentations uh, uh, in today's uh, session by one presentation by parul you will see that uh, the regular polygons as the number of sides of a regular polygon goes to infinity the regular polygon uh, converges to a circle and uh, and uh, and also any 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 smooth curve piecewise smooth simple closed curve you can approximate it by a polygon i mean it not be a regular polygon but you, you can approximate it by a polygon so using that standard approximate and uh, approximation arguments uh, one can uh, having uh, seen the proof for the polygons one can prove it for an arbitrary uh, piecewise smooth sim simple uh, closed curve or in other words rectifiable curves so uh, since then many proofs so this is like 200 bc to 140 bc and since then many proofs have been given some of them incomplete uh, although uh, they were all employing interesting and fruitful ideas uh, so without even trying to be exhaustive the list of mathematicians uh, we we generally swear uh, by their names uh, who considers considered these problems they include euler the bernoulli brothers gauss steiner westras schwartz levy smith they all attempted i mean i i won't say they failed but all of them made some progress they employed some interesting ideas these ideas were useful later for uh, a mathematician uh, to uh, prove this uh, later so the case of uh, so let me just quote this interesting uh, quote from uh, the papus of alexandria uh, book so there uh, it is of course very vague because uh, mathematics was not as rigorous as it is today i mean uh, there was no formal mathematics language at that point of time so the quote is i will just read it verbatim b's then know just this fact which is useful to them that the hexagon is greater than the square and the triangle and will hold more honey for the same expenditure of material in constructing each but we the human beings claiming a greater share in wisdom than the bees will investigate a somewhat wider problem namely that of an uh, all equilateral or equi equiangular plane figures having an equal perimeter that which has the greatest number of angles is always the greater and the greatest of them the as the number of angles keep on increasing i told you that the the polygon will converge regular polygon will be as close to a circle right it will tend to a circle and uh, and it will have uh, having its perimeter equal to that so this is just uh, something which was directed towards the isoperimetric problem and it was interesting that this observation was made of course it's not uh, as precise and it's not like it is slightly off the mark i would say uh, but still i mean uh, the observation is important i mean okay so the case of rectangles uh, was already known to euclid which was like around 300 bc and I, that's why i told you that even a school uh, uh, student should be able to solve this uh, little progress was made by greek geometers until uh, simon lorel and jacob steiner proved it in the late 18th century like see remember that we are talking about this problem from uh, 200 bc and now in 18th century 
right uh, it was proved and ag again the, the their proof was incomplete they just proved the uniqueness of the minimizer they did not uh, prove the existence existence part was proved by steiner uh, 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 sorry so no no what i am trying to say is uh, no this uh, euler and steiner uh, they they made some progress but they of course did not prove the complete problem but using sim symmetry argument later steiner showed that the minimizer is a circle so this was the uniqueness part which was settled uh, but he did not prove the existence of a minimizer the mini existence was settled by edler uh, in the year 1882 so so remember so many great mathematicians attempted this but a mathematician whom uh, maybe many of the you might not even have heard his name edler he proved this in 1882 right I, after so many uh, 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 years like uh, from uh, from this uh, 200 bc to 1882 so so many uh, year, so much of time had passed already and this is why see i mentioned this history and the challenges that many mathematicians faced just to highlight that uh, the story of queen dido is important so that you know how challenging something uh, is to prove mathematically rigorously but uh, the observation and the implementation uh, need not take that long i mean uh, this is the this is why uh, i i mentioned the uh, though i said it's a brief history i think i did give you some glimpse of uh, it okay so like some detailed glimpse of it so most histories of the isoperimetric problem begin with its legendary origin in the problem of quindido i will explain you what i mean by the problem of quindido so what was her problem her problem was to enclose an optimal portion of land using a leather thong uh, which is made out of a uh, hide of an ox okay so there was this leather and using this leather of an animal uh, she wanted to enclose a piece of land such that the area is as large as possible and why did she landed in this problem i will tell you the complete story in a while but then if the this optimal portion of land is to be enclosed by some leather uh, thong then uh, solving it on the euclidean plane was not enough because our earth is not flat we all know that it's a curved surface so there was a need to solve this isoperimetric problem on curved surfaces i will not get into the development uh, that is uh, made in the isoperimetric problem for curved surfaces but this is an important uh, picture from so queen dido lived from this uh, in this era 839 bc to 759 bc so this is where the legendary origin of isoperimetric problem is believed to uh, start from okay and uh, what so uh, what happened was uh, there was this kingdom of tyre which is uh, i think uh, the modern day lebanon where uh, there, there was this king who had two children uh, elisa the elder elder girl was elisa Uh, who is also known as dido and the younger one was pigmalion and when he died uh, he he had uh, he had made both his children as their joint heir but when he died the uh, uh, the people of this kingdom treated only the son as the as their king and they though he was still a very young child and uh, so later uh, uh, dido or elisa married uh, as uh, married uh, her uncle who was second in power to her brother pigmalion so there was rumor said that uh, 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 dido's husband did have some uh, very huge um, uh, treasure buried somewhere and uh, pigmalion was greedy and he got uh, his brother in law murdered so uh, in the hope that uh, he will get all the treasure that he is secretly buried somewhere Uh, but uh, so queen dido knew uh, was was uh, intelligent and clever so she knew what was happening so once her husband died uh, she uh, expressed a desire to her brother that she wants to move to her to his uh, kingdom she wants to move with him in in the palace and uh, she requested that he send some uh, uh, people to help her in uh, uh, in uh, carrying out the uh, uh, shift uh, from her place to his place and uh, pigmalion was all i mean of, of course uh, hoping that she will also bring all the wealth with her so she he help he sent a few people to her place uh, to help her uh, shift to the new place but uh, uh, what queen dido did was uh, uh, she was not known as queen dido at that that point of time she was only known as elisa so she instructed uh, like ordered this men who uh, whom her brother had sent 
to sell, to throw all the bags uh, uh, she had a few bags packed to throw them in the ocean as a final offering to her late husband and she told the people that these bags contain gold which belong to her husband and she doesn't want to use them and she wants to throw them away and all these people i mean they of course will follow what the ruler of the or the people in authority tell them so they just threw everything in the sea and later uh, queen dido told me that now if we go to pigmalion pigmalion wanted all this wealth and when he comes to know that what we did to his his the treasure uh, which was supposedly the treasure uh, then they will have to face the anger of uh, king pigmalion and it will not it will not be in the interest of this man so then they, she convinced them to flee the kingdom with her and they uh, and so they agreed because they had no other choice but uh, queen dido was clever she did not, the, those bags did not have gold those bags only had some sand so she was uh, she tricked these people and uh, then they flee the kingdom and on their way so let me also show you there i will come back to that let me also show you their uh, itinerary so they started from uh, this lebanon here they started from lebanon and they on their way they landed on this island uh, called uh, cyprus and eventually they reached tunisia so lebanon to cyprus and finally they landed in tunisia and in tunisia when they landed they told the local uh, the existing king over there that uh, please give me some piece of land where we can have some temporary refuge uh, before we go on to the next destination and uh, she told the king that i will only take as much of land as i can uh, enclose with this piece of uh, the animal's leather animal skin and the king took her took her very lightly and uh, he laughed and he said how much okay take it how much can you take uh, how much can you enclose with this leather and she instructed uh, her uh, men to cut this leather animal leather into small narrow strips and she enclosed a complete nearby uh, hill a very very large hill and later some local neighboring kings helped her in settlement and she later established her kingdom over there and she became the queen of that place and it is the modern day uh, it was called carthage at that point of time now in today's time it is known as uh, tunisia it is in tunisia and uh, her the later part of her story was also very very inspiring uh, and fascinating the way she died it is something similar to the story of queen padmavati rani padmavati of indian stories but i don't want to glorify self sacrifice and so on but uh, i would uh, uh, maybe request you to read her complete story how she died etc so she was so popular among writers because of her self sacrifice etc that uh, and she was a woman leader at that point of time and we can imagine how rare it was uh, in, in that ancient time so what i'm trying to emphasize by telling you the story of queen dido though she was not formally a mathematician Uh, women math women started appearing in the formal mathematical scene everywhere uh, around the globe much later but what i'm trying to emphasize here is but they were always uh, implementing mathematics mathematics without knowing that they are implementing mathematics they were using mathematics even in today's time women do use mathematics in their day to day work be it in their kitchen be it uh, outside uh, or whatever work that they take up i mean not it's not restricted to women it's for every human being we all use mathematics without even realizing we are using mathematics but this was like uh, Uh, see even today isoperimetric problem is known as uh, dido's problem and uh, in africa uh, women are known as uh, dido's daughters like in india uh, mathematicians or scientists are known as lilavati's daughters so i will also uh, like uh, list a few uh, motivating resources uh, lilavati's daughters the women scientist of india please uh, if you get a chance get a copy of this book and read it the secret of the surface the mathematical vision of maryam mirza khani we all know she was the uh, uh, fields medal who died a few years ago recently uh, and the story of queen dido i mean uh, her story was became so famous that it made space in the mythological and the epic poem written by enid uh, uh, written by virgil uh, and the poem is known as enid and also please if you get a chance do read men of mathematics by et bell and i would also like uh, maybe uh, show you a few lilavati's daughters or dido's daughters which are around us so these are the women mathematicians faculty members at iser pune so uh, which are like seven women out of 25 number so this is like around 28% of our strength is 
women mathematicians then there are four postdocs out of 16 so uh, yeah so this is around 25% uh, of the strength and the, we have 10 PhD and in PhD students out of a total 42 PhD in PhD students so that is also roughly around 25% and there are upcoming uh, women mathematicians in the making these are our BSMS students fifth year BSMS students so 3 out of 20 which is like 1 7th roughly uh, and uh, so what I am trying to say is uh, there is we want equal representation of all the genders in, in academia and uh, uh, there are opportunities for women, there are these sites which you can look at to, uh, to find scholarships uh, in general but mainly for women uh, in academia and in particular for women in mathematics. Uh, please do go through these sites to get all the scholarships and other various opportunities for higher studies for women and I hope to see uh, at least uh, I mean 50 percent representations of uh, representation of women in every front uh, in the academic uh, scene. Okay. In today's session, uh, I introduced you to uh, a branch of mathematical research uh, called, called as shape optimization problem and I also explained to you a particular example of shape optimization namely the isoperimetric problem. I gave you a glimpse of its history and I also spoke about uh, its legendary origin via the story of Queen Dido. And, uh, uh, and I also told, uh, uh, told you that uh, the representation of women in academia and in particular in mathematics is, is quite uh, low and I would like to see more and more women uh, coming forward and entering this field of mathematics and science in general uh, so, uh, so that this gap is uh, filled and uh, also I mean it's important for more women to enter because it's, it's good to have different perspective and uh, different perspectives give better contribution to the progress of the mathematical research. So it's, it's important to have people from different genders, different background, different ethnicity to enter the field of mathematics for its general good. Okay, thank you.